Namaste and welcome to a basic yoga class. Today I will cover traditional poses that are often encountered in a lot of yoga classes so that when you drop into a regular class you feel more prepared and you know how to position your body safely and effectively. So I'll give you some alignment cues and also uh, the feeling that we want to cultivate in different asanas. Asanas are postures, that's the Sanskrit term for yoga poses. Okay, so let's begin just sitting and focusing on the breath, which is key to any yoga practice. So close your eyes here and find a tall spine. If you tend to round at the low back, remember to give yourself some height and sit on a cushion or a block. Knees lower than the hips. And then lengthen the top of your head towards the ceiling or sky. And let the shoulders soften down away from ears. The closed eyes will invite a sense of introspection we bring all the attention inside to really feel the breath. Noticing the ribcage expanding as you breathe in, the diaphragm expanding, stretching out, moving down. And then contracting the low belly slightly. The ribcage relaxes, the diaphragm contracts, lifting up. Inhale, fullness. Feel air coming in, filling up your lungs. Exhale, breathing out toxins, distractions, anxieties, impurities. Each breath bringing in more vitality, more prana. the exhalations, we cleanse ourselves, breathing out what is no longer serving, supporting us, any stagnant energy. Just a couple more breaths. See if you can watch the breath from the moment it enters the body to that apex, that fullness, and then Continue to observe the body as the breath leaves, getting empty. One more cycle. Feel the sensations in the ribcage, in the belly, expanding as the breath comes in. And contracting low belly slightly as the breath goes out, the ribs soften. Now gently opening the eyes to move into child's pose. So we'll start the practice here on the knees, sitting back onto heels. The knees can be wide apart, the big toes close together. And then try extending the arms forward by the head with your forehead resting on the floor. And just a reminder that any yoga pose, any of the movements, any of the vinyasas can be modified. So if something doesn't feel right for your body, if there's any pain, opt for something different. Trust your intuition to place your body in a way that feels right. So here in child's pose, Balasana, that's the Sanskrit name, let there be a nice stretch for the muscles in the back, a lengthening sensation. The elbows can be straight, the fingers are spread wide, so the hands and arms very active. The shoulders are relaxed. And continue watching your breath as you hold child's pose. 
a great pose to release tension in the back, in the hips. Gently opening through the hips just by sitting back like this. And we'll add a variation to child's pose. Walking the hands over to the right side. Keep your head between your arms. So now the stretch is deeper on the left side of the back. The hips stay back towards heels. Shoulders away from ears, neck long. Then walk your hands over to the left side, same thing. Stretching the right side of your back a little more now. Unclench your jaw. Let the tongue be small inside the mouth. Let your eyes relax. And keep watching the breath throughout the entire practice. Stay focused, stay present. So calm the mind. We'll come back to center now. Downward facing dog next. Bring weight forward onto your hands. And remember, fingers are spread wide. Curl the toes under. Lift the hips high up and far back as you look between your ankle bones. Move your chest towards the space between the legs. The shoulders remain away from ears. Hips far back away from shoulders. You don't have to straighten the legs all the way. You may benefit from bending the knees to find more length throughout your back. And then here, try bending one knee at a time and moving the hips from side to side. Let this feel good in your body. Stretching the hamstrings, the back of the legs, the back. So much happening in this pose. The head stays down the whole time. And as you pause in center with the feet parallel, Move your chest a little closer to the space between the legs. Take one more breath here. Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Exhale all the air out. Then inhale forward into a plank pose, shoulders over wrists, and stay. If you need to modify plank for any reason, one option is to lower knees to floor, which will take some of the pressure off your wrists. You can also come down to your forearm for a forearm plank. Now keep reaching your chest forward, pressing back through the inner heels. The hips are in line with the rest of the body. They're not too high, not too low. Contain the low ribs, navel towards spine. One more breath, building some heat. And then exhale, knees to floor. Move your chest forward past your fingers, uncurl the toes, and bend your elbows towards your waist as you lower down to your belly. Now lift up your chest. The toes are pointing straight back, the elbows are in. We're using the back muscles and the core muscles to stay up here, not the hands. You can leave the hands off the floor. This is a little cobra, bhujangasana, cobra pose. Neck is long, we're strengthening the back muscles. The glutes are part of the core, so we are also gently engaging. And make sure the toes are not pointing out, they're pointing straight back. Keep the navel into the spine and take one more breath in cobra pose, bhujangasana. Then lower your forehead down, lower your hands close to the low ribs on the floor. Keep your elbows drawing towards the waist. And this time we're going higher up, 
Press into the hands and lift your chin, lift your chest. See if you can expand your elbows. And to protect your low back, navel stays up into spine. We're not dumping the weight into the low back. The neck stays very long. Don't lift your chin too much. We're not jamming the neck either. Just opening through the throat. Press the fingertips down. The shoulders, elbows, and wrists are in one line. And you have the option to lift the knees off the floor. So you can do that with the toes curled under or the toes flat. Knees up like this with the toes stretched back, stretched back or curled under too. One more breath, belly in. Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, upward facing dog. And then hips up and back, downward dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Feel your breath here. Remember to stay very present with what is happening, honoring your experience. Walk the hands back towards your feet and stay upside down for a moment. No weight on the hands, all the weight on your feet. They remain parallel to each other. Spread the toes wide. Hold on to your elbows. Frame your face. You can bend the knees as much as you like, releasing top of head down towards floor. Shoulders away from ears. Feel free to rock, swaying from right to left, left to right. Decompressing the discs between the vertebrae in this upside down position. Pause in center, release the hands down. With a soft bend in the knees, roll up the spine, come to stand. Rotate the shoulders up, back and down for mountain pose, Tadasana. And then staying anchored through the feet, very connected to the earth. Join your hands at heart center. Lift the sternum bone towards your thumbs. Draw the navel into spine again and try lifting the heels off the floor to balance. A simple balancing pose. Variation of Tadasana of mountain with this balancing challenge that helps to strengthen the ankles. The strongest of the toes are the big toes, of course, so that's where you want most of the weight. The knees never collapse in, they stay aligned with the ankle bones. Take one more breath, neck is long. Then lower your heels down to the floor, release your arms by the body. A side stretch, cross your right foot behind the left and to the side. Raise your arms up. Hold on to your left wrist with the right hand. Bend the front knee, the left knee, and lean over to the right. Relax the shoulders and take a deep breath in. Stay here, empty out. Again, inhale into the left side of your rib cage. Feel the expansion of the intercostal muscles, the little muscles between the ribs, and stay as you exhale. Come to center, inhale, open your arms, and cross your legs, exhale back into mountain. Other side, right foot crosses back, good, so get stable, and then raise the arms, hold on to your right wrist, inhale tall, lean over to the left, exhale. Don't let the low ribs pop out, this indicates usually that you are contracting or sorry jamming the low back too much we don't want jamming even when there's contraction there's no jamming there's still a feeling of fullness of space and one more breath here into the right side of the rib cage the front knee is bending stay with the shoulders relaxed exhale come to center breathing in 
Open your arms and cross your feet, breathing out. Back into mountain, shoulders up, back and down. Release any tension, any tightness from the neck and shoulders with the circles. And now moving into warrior two and triangle pose. Left foot steps to the front of the mat, right foot back. Wide enough stance, meaning if you open your arms, the heels can line up with the wrists. Usually that's a good indicator for how wide you want your feet. Also, left heel lines up with the right arc. Inhale, arms lift, shoulder height. Exhale, bend the front knee, left knee above the ankle. The knee doesn't collapse inward. That's the weakest part, part of your knee joint. You don't want pressure there. So keep your knee over ankle. If you look at the inside of your left knee, you should be able to see your big toe. And then position the shoulders on top of the hip bones and gaze over the left hand. Strong arms, great asana to strengthen the whole body. Feel the power of your legs. Clear energetic lines. Not only are we strengthening, stretching the physical body, but these postures work energetically as well in the nadis, in the meridians. Take one more breath. And turn the left palm up. Inhale, left arm lifts. Extend your left leg. Touch the back leg with the back hand, right hand. And take a breath here with your legs straight, preparing for triangle pose. Reach the left arm forward as you exhale. The waist is long on the left side. As you lower the hand, the back of the hand touches chin. So there's no pressure on this left hand. The torso is um, parallel to the floor as best you can. The core muscles are engaging to stabilize you here. Right arm extends up. Legs nice and strong, straight. And then aligning the head with the rest of the spine, the cervical spine, aligned with the rest. See if you can tilt your head to look up. If this doesn't feel good for your neck, you can find a different position. But keeping the back of the neck long, so don't lift the chin up. Back of the neck nice and long. Now in every pose, you should be able to breathe properly. Breathe fully. Take one more breath. Inhale, expanding. Exhale, look at the left foot. Firm both legs and come up with the arms wide. Inhale. Lower your hands. Exhale. Turn your feet the other way. We'll repeat these two poses on the second side. So left heel is slightly back. Toes are slightly inward in the back foot. Right toes point to the back of the mat. Belly in, arms lift shoulder height. Inhale. Bend the right knee above the ankle. Exhale. Sanskrit name of this pose. Virabhadrasana, warrior posture. Two. Warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. Gaze over your right hand. Shoulders lined up with the pelvis, torso long, energetically, the crown and the tailbone are moving away from each other, cultivating that decompressed spine as best you can. One more breath here, and turn your right palm up. Lift the right arm up, left hand to the back leg, as you straighten the right leg. One breath, keep your leg straight, reach your right arm far forward, the right outer hip goes back. And then the torso is lining up with the right leg as you lower your hand down and lift the left arm up. Remember to really engage your core. The torso will be as parallel to the floor as possible without having to force anything to happen. So 
So everybody's pose will look different because our bodies are unique. But there's two qualities we want to find in every posture. Stability and a sense of ease. First, stability. Stira in Sanskrit. And then sukham, a sense of comfort in the pose, even within the effort. Take one more breath. Trikonasana, triangle pose. And look down at the right foot. Firm the legs and come up, arms wide, breathe in. Lower the arms, breathe out. Feet parallel, interlace your hands behind your hips and straighten your arms. Lift up the chest, inhale. Hinging at the hips, chest forward, start folding down. You can stop halfway or you can keep going, top of the head down, arms overhead. Shoulder blades close to each other, the hands as close together as possible. Feel free to bend knees without collapsing the knees inward. So keep weight on the outer edges of the feet, the arches of the feet lifting. Prasarita Padottanasana, this wide-legged forward bend. One more breath here. And with knees softly bent, chest reaches forward, come all the way up. Release your hands, walk your feet close together, and sit down on the floor, preparing to lie down on the back. Almost done. Just uh, three more poses. Point your feet, have space behind you to lie. And with the big toes close to each other, reach your arms forward, shoulder height. Take a breath into the chest. Then chin into chest, round your back as you make your way down. Engage the core muscles and they will help you control the descent here, getting stronger each time you do this. Once your head is on the floor hugging the knees, relax your back. Apanasana, this pose that we're in right now, is just like child's pose but done on the back. So, the same idea of lengthening, stretching the muscles in the back, of going inward. Feel your breath. You may notice the belly moving up towards the legs as you inhale, away from the legs as you exhale. And then lower your left foot down, extend the left leg forward. Reach the right arm out, and coming into a twist, cross this right knee over the body and turn the head right. Right hip away from shoulder. This is a wonderful posture to calm down the nervous system while stretching the hip, the glutes, the low back, quadratus lumbarum, opening the chest. So much happening here. So no forcing, no pushing, right shoulder relaxes, the head tilts to the right. Important to maintain the waist very long. Observe, three more breaths here, the sensations in the right side of the ribcage. Breathing out, any last bit of tension, physical or mental, emotional. And when you finish the third breath, bring the knee back up, hug it in. And then bend your left knee, foot on the floor. Cross your right ankle over the left thigh, pointing the knee out. Pelvis very stable. 
You may want to lift the left foot off the floor, interlocking hands behind the thigh or in front of the shin. This is often referred to as the thread the needle pose. Waist long and no pressure on the knee. Never do we want to feel any pain in the knee joint. Take good care of your body. So this thread the needle pose is a wonderful alternative for pigeon pose, for example, where you cannot put pressure on the knee for any reason. You can come onto your back and do this instead. Great way to open the hip, the low back. Keeping the spine long, the neck relaxed. Couple more breaths. Lower your left foot down, the right foot down. Observe the two hips. And hugging the left knee now, straightening the right leg forward. Left arm reaches out to guide your knee across the body towards the right. Turn your head left. Left outer hip away from shoulder. Soften that left shoulder. And feel the sensations of the breath now on the left side of your cage. We're almost done. Make the most out of this time on the mat. Creating space not only in the body, but also in the mind. The breath is helping us stay anchored. Anytime your attention is on the breath, you know that you are present. So if you are distracted today, keep returning to the breath every time you catch your mind elsewhere. Gently guide it back to be here in the body. And as you finish the exhalation, bring this knee back up, hug it in, bend the right knee, foot to floor, Cross left ankle over right thigh. Either keeping the foot down or lifting it up, interlocking hands, fingers behind the right thigh. Maintain that length throughout the spine, space between the vertebrae. Facial expression neutral. Space between eyebrows wide, forehead smooth. Keep watching the breath. Training yourself to be with whatever is happening, whether it is pleasant and pleasant, doesn't matter. Breathe through it. Notice it change, transform. And finishing the exhalation. Lower the right foot down, left foot down. Our last pose before Shavasana, happy baby. Knees into armpits, 
Souza. Hold outer edges of feet if you can, or somewhere along your legs where your shoulders can relax. And keep the knees bent up to 90 degrees. Stay still or rock around like a baby. Feel free to play with your legs, extending them one at a time or both together. Whatever the body wants to do, find your own way of closing the practice. And then prepare to rest in Shavasana. So I recommend having something under your head to support the curve of the cervical spine. And then you could also have something under your knees, especially if there's lower back tension, a pillow, a bolster. If you tend to get cold, put up a blanket, sweaters, socks, and eye pillows are really wonderful too. They induce a state of relaxation for the mind. It could be a little towel over your eyes, blocking the sun or the light. And here, positioning the body in a way that it feels really comfortable, we're going to let go of any need to control. and observe the body relaxing, softening into the pool of gravity. Let the body be heavy. And as you let go of any effort, Sense lightness within. At the same time that the body is heavy, there is a sense of lightness. Lightness that comes from trust, from not needing to be in control. Surrender. And in the rest, allow your body to replenish, restore itself, heal itself, not only physically, but also emotionally, energetically. Notice your feet relaxed, all the toes, ankles, knees, hips, both legs, pelvis, belly, rib cage, all the internal organs, the upper back, middle back, lower back, fully relaxed. waist, armpits, shoulders, elbows, wrists, arms, hands, relaxed, throat, neck, chin, lips, tongue, jaw, cheeks, ears, Temples and eyes, the nose, the center of the eyebrows, forehead, scalp, brain, the whole body at ease. And 
a state that promotes well-being, health. A relaxed awareness. And if you have time to rest longer, stay. If you need to wrap up the practice, Start moving the feet, the hands, circling ankles and wrists, stretching out in your own way as if waking up from a deep restorative sleep. And hug the knees up into chest. Observe how you feel. What is your experience of this moment? And roll over to one side in a fetal position. As we come up, we're leaving behind anything that we do not wish to carry forward. Starting fresh. Come on up to sit again. Try to change the leg that is crossed in front if you're sitting cross-legged. Upright spine. Remember the hips no lower than the knees. You can always sit on something. Eyes closed. Observe three breaths from beginning to end. From the moment the breath starts to the moment it ends. You finish the third breath, joining hands at heart space in gratitude. If there's something specific that you want to bring to your heart now, something you're grateful for, hold it in your heart. Let gratitude fill you up with this high vibrations, positive vibration. And we'll finish by chanting the universal sound of OM, the sound of oneness. Take a deep breath in. OM. Namaste. The light in me honors the light in you. That's the same light shining within all of us, the light of awareness. I hope this was helpful. See you again soon.